Hi everyone, this is Dr. Peggy Simmingson. I'm talking about teaching online in case of an emergency. And one of my favorite topics is synchronous learning. It means learning in real time and it's usually something where you're doing a webinar or video conference. It can be one-on-one, -on -one, it can be a small group, it can be a large group. You can schedule it or it can be impromptu. So it just depends. The advantage of doing real-time synchronous learning with students, especially through something where there's video and audio, is you're gonna increase the personalization that goes on with the class. And so you're just enhancing it. The downside is more things can go wrong. It requires um, a little bit more bandwidth. Um, however, students can participate through their phones if they're using the mobile app. It just depends on which tool you're using. Canvas has something built in called conferences. I'm not as familiar with it, but I do know that it has a virtual whiteboard and you can share your screen and it has other capacity in that. So you can set up a conference, web conference with your students and do it that way. Microsoft Teams, I'm more familiar with. You can do live conferencing there. You can also do one-on-one -on -one impromptu conferences with students through chat. Something else you could do is you could set up a Teams group in there and in Teams with your class, add everybody in your class, add their emails one at a time until you have a class in Teams. And then you can do real-time chat. So you could post something and then have them respond. I've actually done that in my face-to-face -face classes. So we use Teams as a live back channel and they're able to in real time respond. So it's text-based chat. So those are just two options. Again, think about the whole continuum from one-on-one -on -one web conferencing all the way up to large group, scheduled, highly structured web conference. The thing about the structured, large, larger scale kind of whole class web conference is you need structure. So you need, I use PowerPoints or Keynote or, you know, whatever you use to kind of gather some content. And then every five to seven minutes have something interactive. So have students, you know, type something in the chat window in response to a critical thinking question or an application question. You can demonstrate something and then have them type their th open-ended thoughts in the chat window. You've really got to be able to multitask. So running your technology and getting that all set up, pre, during, um, and post, handling the recording. You've also got to be able to navigate and troubleshoot students who are not able to get access the audio and video, and that can be um, a learning curve. So just the technology component of synchronous can be a learning curve. That's why I recommend having a colleague join you the first couple times you do it and practice it ahead of time. So this is where having the buddy system really helps for synchronous learning and I've done this and it just sort of takes stress off of you from the tech component so that you can focus on your content. Now if you're not ready for synchronous learning you may want to start with the asynchronous which is, you know, posting things like short videos or video series for students. Um, that's a little easier for you and them. However, what I've always loved about synchronous is you get that instant feedback from students. Um, again, the personalization is, is good depending on how you present it. What you don't want to do is an hour long kind of voiceover PowerPoint equivalent. You want interactivity. The whole point of synchronous is interacting, talking, whether it's through chat or audio. Um, but again, the downside is having to have that, those tech skills to really help people behind the scenes. That's it. I'm a big fan of synchronous, but it does require um, a different skill set than the asynchronous.